Face Swapper 3 is what you need. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I have something for you. It is easy, it is fun, and you can use it today for free. Let's get started right away. So the very extra super cool thing about this is that it's running in Pinocchio, which is one of the best tools if you want to try out the newest AI gadgets. So download the Pinocchio software, and this is a hub for any other UI tool that you want to try out. So this you just install like a normal software. You have here the download button, run it on your system, and then that's basically it. Now, as soon as you do have Pinocchio installed on your computer, the next step is that you open it up and you have this in front of you. Here you have the discover button where you can find really cool tools, lots of them, all kinds of things for text, for image, for video, for music, whatever you want to do. It's probably in here. And here we have the Face Fusion 3 interface. So click on that and click on this big download button. Now, after you've clicked on that button, the next step is going to be that you have this page here. And here on the left side, it says install for you. So you click on that and then you wait for everything to install. This is an install script that is prepared for you. It downloads everything you need, every model, every extension, everything so that this is running for you you really don't have to do anything. Now, once this is installed, also here on the left side, you have a button to run it. So everything is going to be loaded. And then you will see here the web address for that. So hold your control button on the keyboard and click on that address, which is a number. And then it's going to open up in your browser. And there everything is going to look like this here. Super easy. It looks maybe a little bit complicated, but I'm going to show you what this does. So this is going to be easy for you. Now, first of all, here on the left side, we have the processors. And when you click on this, this is automatically downloading for you the necessary models. Again, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to understand anything. You just click what you want and then magic is happening for you. Now, when you click here for these different areas that you have, for example, expression restore, face debugger, face swapper, face enhancer, things like that, you get extra areas down here that give you more choice. For example, for the face enhancer, you have a choice of different upscaling models. Now, again, when you click on that the first time, it's going to download that model for you. You will see a progress bar in the UI, but also you have this window here for the Pinocchio CMD, where you can see the full process of how much is it downloading, how fast is it downloading and how long it's going to take. So you can see the complete process also down here for the face swapper. And this is basically the main part of this whole software. You have different models you can choose from, try them out, experiment with them. You can also choose here the face size that you want to use down here on the execution providers. Now, this is pretty important because the first time I started that it was on CPU. It's going to be very slow. You want to switch that over to CUDA. I haven't tried the Tensor T selection, but CUDA works good for me. And I would highly suggest to you that you use when you use the face swapper also the face enhancer, which does the upscaling, because otherwise the face swapper is going to render it for you in a very low resolution and it's going to be very pixelated and you will going to have some ghosting, especially in a video. So it's not going to look very good. And if you have that problem, use the face enhancer. Now, when you use multiple options here, like I have four different options here for the face debugger, for the expression restorer. This means that the 
video that you want to render. You can also render it for pictures, but if you want to render a video, it is rendering the video four times. This is not a one render solution. It is rendering the video first for the swapper, then for the next thing, then for the next thing, then for the next thing. So the more things you select here, the longer the render process is going to be. You can also do it for an individual image if you want to. If you just want to replace the image on a photo, that is totally possible. Now here you can see I have selected as a screenshot an image here of a face of a woman. This is the source. Source means the face you want to use. And then down here we have a target. Now in that case, I selected a video. I have downloaded that video. If you want to have that too, it is this video from Envato, but this is a paid service and the video looks a little bit like this. So there is not like crazy dance motion or anything. It is just a woman smiling. The camera is moving a little bit around her. So it's kind of an easy example to use here. And with this, you can see we have here the face and the face structure. And then we have this face. And of course, the face structure of both people is different. So the more the face structure lines up, the more you have something that looks like that person. Because as you can see here on the right side with the output, it is the face of our source image, but it has the face structure of our target face. So it is not exactly the same person. However, in the rendered result, you can see that the result is rather impressive. You see the face expression is there, the smiling, the head turning, the face tracking, everything is there, even the lightning of the room, the atmosphere overall is there. We have here this box from the debugger. So maybe ignore that. You can see here right now that I have a rendering in process on my 4080. It is running, as you can see here, with 14 frames per second. Now, this is the rendering. We don't have it in real time because, as you can see here, this is rendering the multiple steps for the processes that I have selected. So it's not real time video that you can replay in that speed. It is the rendering speed for creating the video for me. And as you can see, the video is also fairly short with 267 frames, but you can make the video as long as you want, depending on what you upload here. I also have resized my video to a 1080 P resolution, so it's not too big for the render process. As you can see here, after roughly a minute, we are finished with the video. And here you can now see the video in full screen. Now here I didn't use the face debugger. There's a little bit of ghosting on the teeth. But when you play around with the settings, you can get some pretty amazing results. Now other settings you can find here on the right side is for the different settings you want to have. For example, here I can select that this is a female face. I can select here the different positions of the face to help the tracking a little bit. You have here the face selector for the age and so on. Uh, so there's a little bit of adjustments here you can do. I found that it works out of the box pretty good if you want to. You can also, what I've seen, select from multiple faces if you want to. For me, I have only tried it with one face in the video, but technically you can render on one face for the replacement and then render on another face in the next phase of replacing that. And of course, this will help you if you want to have consistent faces in your AI videos, you could use this technology to replace the faces from your AI videos to apply the face to every single scene. So overall, this is pretty amazing. It works really fast and it's super easy to use. It takes a little bit of tinkering and trying out to get some good results. But for what it is, I'm absolutely impressed with that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.